what were some of the key findings in terms of the difference between the demands of a game for an AB League player compared to AFL? Yeah, so it was actually really interesting. I mean, so I guess if we go back, I'm looking at league-wide data. So a lot of the research in the literature at the moment, you know, um, particularly around demands of game players, you know, usually done on one team um, or within one club on multiple teams. So, for example, uh, Brisbane Lions up here, they'll do it within their AFL squad, but also their NAB League squad or under-18 squad. Um, I, I, I got access to league-wide data, so it was pretty unique. Um and gave some really good insight. Essentially, um, from a demands perspective, the under-18 game is shorter in duration, so naturally all of your um, absolute demands are going to be lower than AHL um, in terms of total distance, um, high-speed running distance, very high-speed running distance, and so on. But when you actually report it relatively, relative to game time, Uh there's no difference. And the other aspect was looking for trends, I believe, for those that got drafted. What was the... Yeah, so we sort of um, basically trying to create a player profile um, and then do some modelling to see if we can um, identify uh, characteristics that are associated with the player getting drafted or not. So we did a, a positional analysis as well. Um, certain things, So we started off with just physical testing and GPS data. Then we introduced technical data as well. Um, and we used some, some basic regression modeling, but then we looked at some neural networks as well. So, um, base, I, I, I mean, I guess what you guys want to know that came, what came out of it is what gets you drafted. Um, so yeah. I guess basically, uh, bigger, more athletic, uh, bodies typically get drafted. Bigger in terms of height or? Yeah. So just general. In- general stature so height and and uh and body mass as well generally how do you use gps data to um analyze an athlete's performance or do you yep. you know that yep. sort of yeah so you know, G- the gps probably takes up i'd say 90 percent of my time uh so it's a massive component of our program at the broncos yep. um mm-hmm. so we obviously use it to monitor player workloads um both in training and games um, I guess to a deeper level, we're not doing anything that other people are. To a deeper level, we we, we use it to monitor squad intensity um, in key drills. So each of our training sessions in a week will have a certain uh, amount or, or a certain number of allocated key drills. Um, so we look to use the GPS to really quantify um, or, or analyze whether we're hitting target intensities there. And then we do that um, from a player perspective as well. So, um, squad level, player level. What are some of the key metrics that a sports scientist, um, should be across, uh, and how do you sort of explain that to, I guess, to the athlete in terms of what, what it all means? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I don't think, I don't think the metrics are too different. Well, put it this way, I'm using the same metrics at the Broncos that I was at the Pioneers. Um, your thresholds are a little bit different, uh, potentially. Um, so I, I, if we go to the main metrics, everyone's going to be aware of, obviously your total distance, um, high speed running distance and efforts, um, very high speed running distance and efforts. We use a 90% max velocity, um, threshold as well. So we'll look at distance accumulated there and we'll look at number of efforts above 90% max velocity. Um, and then I didn't use Axels and D-cells much in, in footy, in AFL. Um, we use it a lot more in, in NRL, um, and that's purely just because it's more an Axel D-cell line, linear sport, so it makes sense to use them there. I, what are some sort of other technologies that you found have been quite helpful for automation, I guess, from a sports science point of view, those listening in? Um, maybe perhaps they're studying or, or they're looking to sort of develop their skill set to one day be a sports scientist. What are some important things to get your head around? Yep. So Power BI has been great. Um, I use Power BI every day for just, just sort of my summary reports. Um, feeding into that, uh, and this was a skill I developed or started, actually I started tinkering with um, Python. So most people uh, are familiar with R, um, Python similar to R. Um, I'm not going to argue one's better than the other, but I've just done most of my work in Python. Um, 
So started tinkering with that when I got back to Brisbane from, from Doha, um, just playing around with data manipulation in that. Um, then through the PhD, really developed that skill set because I was working with big data sets. Um, I had to manipulate a lot of things.